When it comes to hunting exotic animals in Texas, a lot of that is done uh, on what I would call more traditional style Texas ranches, but this country out here that we've been in for the past couple of days is the real deal. This whole Trans-Pecos mountain area is literally some of the roughest country I've ever been in, if not the roughest. Audad are from Africa and their native range is not much different to the country we're in now. If people didn't know any better, you'd really think that they evolved here and they've lived here for hundreds, if not you know, thousands of years. I believe it to be the hardest hunt in Texas and one of the hardest hunts uh, in North America. It's been quite a journey so far, but really we're just getting started. Flew into San Antonio from Minneapolis yesterday evening and spent about seven hours on the road this morning heading southwest to West Texas. And I've been to a lot of different parts of Texas, hunting a lot of different stuff, but I had never been to West Texas. And frankly, I've never really had a reason to come out here, but this week I've got plenty of good reasons to be here. First of all, hanging out with some cool dudes, good friends, some wild country, but the main objective here is to see and connect with my first Barbary, otherwise known as Audad. Some people call it a sheep. It's not actually a sheep, but it's this crazy big game animal. They actually come from North Africa. So this is some nasty, nasty country out here, but it's a beautiful kind of nasty. I gotta say, I've never hunted anything quite like it. I don't know what's in store, but I'm out here with the West Texas Sherpa, my new friend Casey, and he's gonna show us what it's all about. Just double check my zero, which is dead nuts at 100 where it needs to be. I've got this custom knob on here from Burris, cut for the ballistics of the load that I'm shooting. I'm shooting a 300 wind mag, 200 grain terminal ascent bullet from Federal. And uh, all good on the zero, so that's good, but I wanna double check the dial as well. And, and quite honestly, I haven't been able to shoot long distance for quite a while. 400 yards, some people might not even call that long range, but it is long range and it's nothing to take lightly, especially we're gonna be shooting at an animal. So I'd really like to just double check and shoot at the distance that I might be hunting at. Always a good thing to do. Dead center. You just deal. blew it up. Perfect. That always feels good. Oh yeah. You gotta, you gotta get that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I think just about everybody who takes hunting seriously and hunts for most of their life ends up building a bucket list, those dream hunts that you wanna check off you know, before your final day on this earth. And for me, one of those hunts for the longest time now has been a Texas Audad. These guys wouldn't even let us get to camp and they had to, they had to go ahead and find some, some animals hanging up on this high plateau. Pretty amazing watching them up there. Why they would want to be up there is hard to believe. Audad is one species that I, I still have never gotten tired of hunting. They're such an amazing animal. The fact that they are native to you know North Africa and, and were introduced here in this area back in the early 1950s. They have adapted to this country like nothing else and call it their home. Uh, West Texas has the best Audad hunting, Barbary sheep hunting anywhere in the world at this point. They're just such an unbelievably tough animal and they call these extremely arid desert mountains home and thrive out here. I've wanted to do this hunt in a really, really raw and real sort of way. And so when I finally heard about this guy, the West Texas Sherpa, and these hunts that he does out in West Texas, where you can actually set up a camp and, and hunt right out of your tent, in this rugged, rough mountain country, I knew that that was the Audad hunt I wanted to do. There are a couple small towns nearby, uh, but it is true high desert country on the you know border of Mexico here in West Texas. It's one of my favorite places to hunt. This type of country is kind of what I prefer hunting in general and uh, getting a true high desert mountain experience. After getting camp set up and everything like that, having a good first night, we uh, woke up before daylight the next morning, let the sun come up, 
uh, and relocated those sheep pretty quickly. And they were only about 700 yards from camp. They were on a, on a rim top, uh, on, on the top of a mesa. It, if you follow the rim to the right from where we saw those last night and you keep following it to where it starts to bend around. This, this property out here, it's, it's, a, it's a big canyon with two giant mesas on either side of us and there's sheep that, that pass through here pretty constantly. Just starting to break daylight. The sun hasn't even come through this whole canyon yet. Woke up, had some coffee. We're already glassing up some Audad up here on the same rim that they were on last night. It's pretty beautiful watching them glow up there in the sun. There's at least one nice ram in there. We're so close to Mexico, we can hear the chickens crowing in a little small town across the river there. So, pretty wild, but it's gonna take our time and see what we see and figure out where we wanna go from here. Probably a 30 inch ram or 29. There he is, he just picked his head up. We relocated the sheep that we had seen the night before and started to hatch a plan on how we were actually gonna get up on this mesa and hopefully close in on them and find a ram that we wanted to shoot. Once we actually get up top and get the sun in our favor, just have y'all stick really, you know, really close to the backside of me, just kind of single file. Because if they do catch our silhouette, then at least they'll just be seeing one silhouette, not three spread out. So right on. We'll get up. Going up that first slope that first day, you know, you kind of trying to get your legs underneath you, trying to get acclimated to everything, and I felt like I was ice skating across these rocks. I mean, it was super, super sketchy climbing up this deal, having these rocks slide out from underneath my feet. So you cannot let your guard down the entire time. So he's gonna make his way up to breach the skyline. We're gonna stay back for a second. This is gonna be interesting. Hopefully they're up here. They'll either be right up top there, just feeding right off the rim where we saw them, or they may have ended up moving down into one of these canyons on the other side. So we'll just slowly work our way over there. So as we're moving across the flat on that first morning, we expected that the Audad were gonna be out somewhere in that three, 400 yard range when we, when we eventually would maybe find them. We were pretty shocked when we came up over this rise and realized that we had Audad spread out from 60 yards out to 100 yards. We were pinned down. Even though we only had a couple of days, you know, Casey's specialty is putting people on mature rams. And I really just wanted to shoot an Audad um, just, to, just to shoot my first Audad. But hearing how passionate he was about trying to take a mature ram, it certainly inspired me to want to do so myself. As we were finally able to sort through all of them, we realized that there just wasn't a mature ram in that group. So we made the decision to leave those sheep alone, but we wanted to spend more time trying to find that mature ram. So we left them up there to maybe find them if we needed to later. And we spent the rest of the day just bumping around to a bunch of different spots, hard on the glass all day. I believe a lot of people have not been to this part of the world uh, at all. It's, everyone thinks of South Texas, uh, the Mesquite Flats, the Golden Triangle, uh, the, the Corpus Christi area is South Texas, and that is true. But when you think of West Texas, it's not, uh, it's not San Antonio, it's not San Angelo. It is this part of the world. We're in the Trans-Pecos, the Chihuahuan Desert, uh, sandwiched between kind of Presidio, Terlingua area along the Rio Grande. And this truly is a part of Texas that not a lot of people get to see, um, even Texans. Being from Texas myself, I've never actually been out this far west and this close to the border and I've always wanted to, and finally getting to see this and experience an odd ant hunt like this, it, it's pretty cool because it's it's something I've never done, and when you're out here, you just, you don't feel like you're in Texas, you know, it's, it's like you're on the moon out here just because of the terrain, you know, lack of vegetation, desert air, it's, and just the elevation that you're at, it's a pretty neat experience to come out here and do this. The biggest parts of, of, of an odd ad hunt is, is glassing, I mean, uh, they are the exact same color as the rock and shale in this country and they blend in like they evolved here. Their eyesight is so incredible that we're not looking at, you know, 
a thousand yards, we're looking at two to three miles at times. It can truly be, you know, the toughest part of the hunt is to just locate them. You have to spend a lot of time behind glass and, you know, to the point where you start going cross-eyed. We sorted through a lot of sheep on that first day and we spent a lot of time behind the glass, multiple different locations, never turned up a mature ram. So it made me realize that this wasn't gonna be a walk in the park. I've known Cody for a little while now, but this was really our first time to be able to get in a hunting camp together. And he was really kind of the grand master to coordinate this camp. And it was clear that he had done this a few times because that first evening, that meal he cooked up was probably the best hunting camp meal I've ever had. To really appreciate this land, you have to stay out here. I've never been anywhere this remote uh, of a place. We do have the opportunity to stay in a, in a lodge, but for this hunt and what we're doing, um, we thought the wall tents on the side of the mountain, we can literally walk outside the tent in glass 360 degrees uh, and have the ability to go to sheep that we can see. And Nothing wrong with staying in a lodge, but um, this is pretty awesome to wake up to. I knew from a young age that I wanted to guide. Um, I, I wanted it to be my career. It's hunting is just my passion and, and truly hunting in this desert rough terrain is, is what I absolutely love the most. I used to work at an archery shop and be a archery technician for many years. After that, I finally hit a point where I was still guiding. I was getting to guide. I was getting to go out and hunt these Audad and other species, but I didn't get to do it enough to where I was happy. So I dropped everything else and started guiding full time about five years ago. Casey's literally one with these Audad. Like he's an Audad at heart. I mean, when you look at this terrain, I mean, you gotta be hardcore for this stuff. I mean, anything out here is gonna stick, poke you, bite you, rattlesnakes, scorpions. I mean, there's anything out here can, I mean, it could kill you, but I mean, you have to be hardcore for this stuff. When it comes to Audad hunting and his just passion for it, it's, uh, I'm envious because I've never seen anybody like that. It's, a, it's truly a passion of mine, and, and as long as I can physically do it, I don't see a, a true end to it. Um, as long as I can get up the mountain, it's, a, it's an addiction and a passion that I have that it, uh, I don't know if I'm an adrenaline junkie or if I just you know can't get away from these mountains in West Texas, but uh, I'll, I'll keep after it as long as I can. It's, you know, I'm not too old, but uh, I'll, I'll keep going as long as I possibly can and, and uh, stay out in these mountains chasing sheep. We just got up this morning, made some coffee, started doing some glassing around camp, and we've located several groups now. But this one in specific has a really, really nice old ram in it. So we're just hoping that they're going to get into a spot that we can go after them. And it looks like, knock on wood, that they might be coming down the chute into our side, which would be a godsend. So we don't have to get up top because that'll be a whole ordeal. Is he coming down? He's coming straight down, following the, the ewes are running down that face. And he's following. Oh. He's, he's walking down the top ledge. He's about to go into the chute where it switchbacks. He's coming right now. Going into this stock on the second morning was way more intense than the stock from the first morning because this time we knew there was a mature ram in the group. We spent a bunch of time building a game plan on how we were going to move into these animals. We looked at hunt stand, we glassed them, we debated amongst each other, and finally when we felt like we had a good plan, we moved into position. But we're going to come down, get in this bottom, and run this ridge all the way up. And we'll just try to be as quiet as we can. It's funny because a lot of the people I hunt with regularly, they give me crap about how fast I move and how I just never stop and this and that, but I've hunted with truly, truly hardcore people, and Casey is definitely one of those guys. It was a task just for me to try to keep up with him, scaling these mountains, even walking across the flats. He's just a machine the way he covers his country, not only on his feet, but through the glass. Like, the intensity of the glassing that we experienced on this trip was way, way more than any other type of hunting I've done. Get over this ridge, and then the next ridge, over that, is the one we'll get, if we don't see it beforehand, is what we'll get on top of. Hopefully they'll be behind it out of the wind. Okay, we're closing in on the final stretch here, where we think the sheep probably are hanging out. We're already in range, so we're just gonna slowly crest this hill. Casey's gonna lead, see if he can maybe spot them, and then 
figure out how we can get into a shooting position if they're up here. The spot that we were in was, was difficult because once again, just like the first morning, we were too close to the animals and the wind died and it was quiet. So every footfall was just crunchy and it was pretty nerve wracking trying to put the finishing touches on the stalk. And then out of nowhere, as these sheep were just doing their thing, we heard a side-by-side -side down the mountain from one of the people working on this ranch. And the sheep had no idea we were there up until that point, but they heard that side-by-side. -side. They just curiously looked down in our general direction and they immediately pinpointed where we were at. Once those sheep spotted us, it was pretty much chaos from that point forward. I had to try to get into a shooting position. We knew they were looking at us. We knew it was just gonna be a matter of time before they peeled out. They all bunched up into a group. Casey was trying to keep me on the mature ram as I was looking through my optic. And it was one of those situations where I didn't ever have that moment where I felt like I was comfortable to press that trigger. Okay, he's looking uphill now. They're walking left. He's in the, you see the middle of the group, biggest, biggest sheep. He's going, going to the left. We, right, right in the top middle of the group, he's the biggest sheep. He was either quartering away, or there was a ewe standing in front of him, or he was behind some brush. There were all these things happening, and I just never had a, a really, really clear, confident shot opportunity. What? I mean, we'll, we'll peek over there, but they're probably gonna run all the way to the end of that bowl. And Red's will have shot your ram, so I would keep looking up that way and see if you can relocate him for us bowl by the time we get over there so we'll just head down meet you relocate them and regroup and find another way at them this really is just it's sheep hunting is what it is and to be able to have will and cody back on the glass keeping eyes on the animals from a different spot while we're moving in for the stock was a huge advantage I and mean, we actually watched them move across this whole mount this whole range right here just ridge to ridge and we were able to keep an eye on them so when the guys got back to camp we could continue to watch them. To have success in a short amount of time, it's, it's a team effort. There's a lot of topography out here, a lot of land to cover. Um, we still haven't, we haven't looked at you know, more than a third of this property. By spreading out, we did have the ability to glass up other herds of sheep, watch them, uh, look for mature rams. And I, it's definitely in the, helped with the, with the short amount of time we had for this hunt. We were able to keep our eyes on those sheep throughout the day, but as luck would have it, they just never ended up in a spot where we could move in for a stalk. We know that there's sheep up there. I think there's a better chance of us doing the quick, you know, hike up top, getting up here and checking some of the cuts and stuff that are out of the wind on this side. So far I've been given two opportunities by these Audad to possibly get a shot on one first morning and then this morning, but clock is ticking, so get to that point in every hunt where you gotta make a decision. We had about three different options of what we could do, and as a group, we talked it over, and we decided that the best play for that evening was to go back on the mesa that we had hunted the first morning and try to turn up a sheep. And so we picked our way across that mesa, saw a bunch of fresh sign, saw some sheep way off in the distance, and then we essentially came to what was the end of the road, and that was just a steep, deep, nasty canyon where we couldn't really go any further with the amount of time that we had left for the evening. As we began to pack up all of our stuff, lo and behold, there just happened to be some sheep that came out of nowhere running across in front of us. I pulled up my range finder. I got a range on them real quick. Saw that they were at 600 yards, but they were closing in. You see the sheep kind of walking, walking down into that, into that little cut right there. Yeah. So he's he's about to go over the top of. If you go up the cut, and you and right where the cut kind of stops and it just slopes up, go hard left, and he's walking. He's gonna. He's actually about to come to the uh, this left little rocky top here that's pink. Yeah. Of course, instead of walking where the ewes did, where they walked right into range. He decided to go on the back side of this hill and break off from them and we never saw him again. We're gonna work our way back to the truck right now. We don't have a whole lot of light left. We're hoping to just bump into something here in the last 45 minutes or so that we have of light on the way back to the truck. So we'll see, but we gotta get hiked out of here.
So it's the final morning. Everybody wakes up. We're all still committed to the mission. We get behind the glass right away. We find the sheep from the evening before. Eventually we turn up the mature ram, but those animals just never ended up in a spot where we could go after them. Normally when I get down to the wire on a hunt like this, I do feel a high level of stress and pressure because I wanna, I wanna get what I came for. I wanna accomplish my goal. But in this case, it was just this strange feeling of relief that I haven't had in such a long time. And the reason I felt that way is just because I almost feel like the mission was accomplished. I got to hunt these animals for the first time. It's something I've wanted to do for so long. I got to spend time in a rugged, raw hunting camp with a group of guys who I really enjoy spending time with. And overall, I just felt fulfilled.